The top stories tonight in Y News. The Philippines' extension of the travel ban on India, the United Arab Emirates and five more countries is effective until July 31st, with the inclusion of Indonesia on the list amid the rising cases in the fellow Asian country. The Philippines has recorded its highest daily tally of administer administered COVID-19 vaccines as the government pushes to beat the record in the coming months with the arrival of more vaccine supplies. The use of Bodymax Index as a requirement for promotion in the Philippine National Police has been suspended. The country's ruling party, PDP Laban, plans to adopt Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte should she decide to run for president. What could be the reaction from the mayor's regional party? Know why Gangnam Style Beats and Fast Music is no longer allowed in gyms in South Korea. And scientists in Australia develop a pain-free sugar test for diabetics. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, July 14, 2021. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I am Harleen Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. Mr. Angelo Castro III will be joining us later in the program. First in the news. We begin our story tonight with the extension of the travel ban on seven countries, including the United Arab Emirates, Oman and India, with several overseas Filipino workers finding themselves stuck in the countries considered as high risk for COVID-19. The government is now planning to revise the implementation of the travel restrictions. Our Malacanang correspondent, Rosa Bicoz, explains why. As part of the government's intensified efforts to prevent the more transmissible Delta variant from entering and spreading in the country, the Philippines has extended the travel restrictions for travelers coming from seven countries. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases has approved the extended travel ban on India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, United Arab Emirates, and Oman until July 31. In approval ng inyong ITF for extension of travel restrictions to India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Nepal, United Arab Emirates, at Oman hanggang katapusan ng buwan or July 31, 2021. Roque said the IATF Technical Working Group has also been instructed to further review and submit recommendations on the appropriate testing and quarantine protocols for inbound travelers from the above-mentioned countries as well as other nations considered as high risk for COVID-19. The palace spokesperson added that he will discuss with the IATF to implement the travel restrictions monthly and not bi-weekly. This is to give consideration to overseas Filipino workers abroad who are having difficulties in booking their tickets back to the Philippines amid the travel ban. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. President Rodrigo Duterte has approved the travel restrictions for all travelers coming from Indonesia within the last 14 days effective on July 16 until July 31, 2021. However, passengers already in transit from Indonesia who arrived before the said period may still be allowed to enter the country but will be required to undergo a full 14-day facility-based quarantine and RT-PCR test. Meanwhile, the interagency task Task Force Against COVID-19 has prepared its recommendations for the community quarantine classification to be implemented over the NCR Plus areas and other parts of the country for the second half of July. Local government units have until today to appeal their quarantine status. Though some cities in Metro Manila have higher daily COVID-19 cases, Malacanang said the decision of the quarantine restrictions will be based on the overall COVID-19 situation and healthcare utilization rate of the capital. 
Meron na po, but the uh, LGUs are given until today to appeal, so I am not at liberty to announce the final quarantine classification. Dahil kinakailangan, the IATF will meet pa po to discuss the pending appeals. The Philippines has now reached a new record high of COVID-19 vaccine doses administered in one day. The National Task Force Against COVID-19 is optimistic to have higher inoculation numbers in the next few days. Meanwhile, one million doses of Sinovac vaccines arrived in the country. Dante Amento will give us more details live. Dante, how many jabs were administered in, the vac in this vaccination milestone and when was it recorded? Yes, a Harleen National Task Force against COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. has disclosed a total of 375,059 COVID-19 jabs yesterday, July 13. This was the highest inoculation recorded since the government's vaccination rollout started in March. Thus, they are expecting a higher output in the coming months as 16 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines are expected to be delivered in the Philippines. Aking report kay Presidente na ibibridge natin yung uh, 300 to 400 na, na mark. Uh, gusto ko pong uh, ibalita ngayon na magandang balita na na-bridge na natin ang pinaka-highest uh, day ano natin, job natin. 375,000 po tayo kahapon. Galvez assures that the distribution of Sinovac vaccines will no longer be hampered by the Certificate of Analysis. Ito na maganda na balita natin ngayon, uh, nagkaroon na tayo ng agreement with Sinovac na pagdating ng, ano, ng uh, ating uh, mga bakuna ay mayroon na itong COA. One million doses of China-manufactured Sinovac vaccines arrived in the country this morning. NCR Plus, eight areas that include Metro Manila, Metro Cebu, Metro Davao, Bulacan, Batangas, Cavite, Laguna, Pampanga, and Rizal are the priority for the supply. The vaccines are distributed immediate, immediately upon arrival. I would like to tell the public na ang dumating po ngayon na 1 million, mayroon na po itong COA, pwede na po itong turok right away. Local governments such as the cities of Valenzuela, Las Piñas, Taguig, Malabon, Muntinlupa, and Caloocan City may resume the inoculation for a second dose. Early and currently, a total of 21,779,910 doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been delivered in the country, of which 13 million doses are Sinovac vaccines and with a vaccination target of more than 77 million Filipinos. And that's the latest live. Back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Dante Amento, reporting live. Meanwhile, there are no specific laws yet in the Philippines that could impose punishment to a person who is using an unregistered vaccine or medicine according to the Philippines Food and Drug Administration. This after a lawmaker divulged that he received his booster shots even without the FDA's approval. But what could be held liable for doing such an act? Our health correspondent, Aiko Miguel, reports. San Juan City Representative Ronaldo Zamora is not liable after receiving unregistered Sinopharm COVID-19 vaccines. Zamora revealed that he completed his Sinopharm doses last December 2020, even without the approval yet from the Philippine Food and Drug Administration or FDA. According to FDA Director General Undersecretary Eric Domingo, there are no existing laws yet in the Philippines that could punish the users. Sa atin po kasing batas ang ano, uh, wala pong pananagutan ang mga halbawa na kabili ng counterfeit na gamot, mga substandard na gamot or nakainom nito or na-inictionan nito. Sa FDA po, ang meron pong mga kinakasuhan natin ay yung nagbebenta ng unregistered, illegal, falsified or mga poor quality drugs. Domingo said the medical professional and supplier of the vaccine are held liable for the use of unregistered vaccines and medicines. Ang doktor ay bawal magreseta, mag-inexion, magbigay ng gamot na hindi po rehistrato sa FDA. Pagkatapos yun din pong importer at distributor ay meron din pong kaso yun dahil bawal din pong magpasok at magbenta ng gamot na hindi rehistrato. 
According to San Juan City Mayor Francis Zamora, his father is willing to cooperate with the authorities in the ongoing investigation. I'm sure my father will be more than willing to cooperate. Ako po, sa totoo lang, nagulat din po ako sa ikunento niya. Because as far as I know, ang bakunang nakuha niya lamang ay yung dalawang dose ng Pfizer mula sa San Juan. Kaya nung sinabi nga niya ako na nakapag-sinopharm na raw siya previously, sa totoo lang, nag-aalala ako. Because as a son, diba, I don't know how that will affect my father's health. The Department of Health reminded the public and local government units that COVID-19 booster shots are not yet recommended in the Philippines. The DOH appeals to all to be fair and adhere to the government's vaccination protocol. Kailangan lang natin maalala na hindi pa po lahat ng tao sa Pilipinas na babakunahan and it is equally our job as citizens of the country to be fair to the rest of the population kasi every additional vaccine that we take um, in addition to what is due us is actually a vaccine that less Experts want to let the public understand that it is dangerous to one's health to take or be inoculated with unregistered medicines and vaccines. For this are not thoroughly reviewed and regulated by experts. Its good or bad effects to one's health are unknown. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give the glory to God. The Philippines recorded 3,806 new cases of novel coronavirus disease or COVID-19, pushing the nationwide case count to 1,485,457. The last time that the country recorded 3,000 cases was on June 22nd with 3,666 new cases then. In its latest bulletin, the Department of Health, or DOH, said that the number of active cases in the country is down to 44,408. Of these, 90% are mild, 3.5% are asymptomatic, 1.95% are moderate, 2.8% are severe, and 1.7% are in critical condition. The DOH also reported that the total number of recoveries climbed to 1,404,081 after 6,296 more patients recovered from the disease. The death toll rose to 26,232 with 140 new fatalities. Meanwhile, the current global caseload and death toll stood at 187,798,855 and 4,048,903 respectively. Based on the latest data from uh, update rather from the Johns Hopkins University Center for System Science and Engineering or CSSE, the U.S. is the worst hit country with the world's highest number of cases and deaths at 33,914,884 and 607,771 respectively, according to the CSSE. In terms of infections, India is still in the second place with 30,946,147 cases and 411,406 deaths. In terms of deaths, Brazil comes second with 535,838 fatalities and 19,151,993 COVID-19 cases. The other countries which have more than 5 million confirmed coronavirus cases are France, Russia, Turkey, and the United Kingdom. Government health experts warn against, warned against the use of antigen tests to see if they have developed antibodies after receiving their COVID-19 vaccine. Meanwhile, new data showed that less than 1% of individuals who have already received their COVID-19 vaccine have experienced side effects. Aiko Miguel will tell us why. The health department and other expert groups do not recommend people to have antigen testing after being inoculated with COVID-19 vaccines. According to Dr. Rod Jean Solante, one of the vaccine expert panel members, it is not proper to use an antigen test to determine whether a vaccinated individual has developed an antibody. We don't recommend getting an antibody test after getting the vaccine. And we have already our stand on that, no? The all expert group, the Department of Health, including FDA, because the current serologic test that determines antibody 
is not optimized to detect the antibody na nakukuha natin doon sa bakuna. Dr. Solante also explains resources and antigen test kits will just be put to waste. Antigen test kits are appropriate to be used for people with high viral load and are suspected COVID-19 patients. Now we discourage that, no? Kung nakikita nyo yung mga neutralizing antibodies sa mga hospitals, even high precision, we discourage get, getting you those tests because that test is not optimized and that does not measure the antibody na nakuha natin sa bakuna. It may give us a false impression na wala tayong antibody. Results of antigen tests should not be used for people as basis to decide to have their booster shot if they have not detected antibody from their samples. Experts appeal, trust the efficacy of FDA-approved COVID-19 vaccines. Meanwhile, in the country, there are over 13 million vaccinated Filipinos. 3.5 million have been fully vaccinated. With this data, less than 1% or 47,000 have experienced adverse events following immunization. Based on FDA's report, there are five common adverse events recorded after receiving Sinovac, AstraZeneca, Sputnik V, and Pfizer COVID-19 vaccines. These are increased blood pressure, headache, vaccination or injection site pain, pyorexia, and dizziness. According to infectious disease expert Dr. Anna Ong Lim, here in the country, there is no recorded death and abortion case yet due to COVID-19 vaccines. No severe adverse events have uh, been attributed causally to the vaccines. Pwede naman talagang nagkakataon lang na, na uh, nagkaroon no, ng ganitong event, yung abortion, spontaneous abortion, uh, after uh, the patient received vaccines. And ito na nga yung dahilan kung bakit uh, maingat din tayo sa pagbabakunan ng mga puntis kasi pwedeng-pwedeng mangyari even if hindi nabakunahan at ayaw naman natin mapagkamalan na dahil sa bakuna ay nagkaroon ng medical event. Medical professionals stand firm that COVID-19 vaccines available in the country are safe and effective. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine government is planning to build an institution similar to the United States Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, or CDC. This was disclosed by the National Task Force Against COVID-19 Chief Implementer Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. during today's arrival of 1 million Sinovac vaccines from China. The government will invest on scientific research to fight serious global health situations that may arise in the future such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Galvez said the government is working to consolidate all state-run medical and scientific research institutions in the country. We are looking forward na i-combine natin ng UPNIH, yung ating uh, Syndromic uh, Analysis Center, at uh, yung RITN, and also yung uh, other, no, other research, yung BIP, ay makaroon tayo ng isang tinatawag na CDC-like na para sa US. At gagawin po natin yan kasi yun po ang direksyon ng ating mahal na Presidente. For those watching our 24-7 live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Amid the ongoing rift in the ruling party PDP Laban, its chairman, President Rodrigo Duterte himself, will preside the National Assembly initiated by the faction of Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi on Saturday. This was despite the pronouncements of Senator Manny Pacquiao's camp, who is the party president, that they will not recognize and attend the meetings. PDP Laban Deputy Secretary General Melvin Matibag says majority of the party members are expected to attend the assembly. It's the decision of the president. He loved PDP Laban. He wants to show the support to PDP Laban. So he wants to be present despite of his uh, busy schedule. What can I assure you? Wala po kaming tatanggalin na PDP Laban member sa Friday and Saturday. What we will have is a democratic process of having an election na kung saan may mananalo, may matatalo. 
Earlier, PDP Laban Vice Chairman and Energy Secretary Alfonso Cusi said one of the agenda on Friday is the complaint of the PDP Laban's Bulacan chapter against Pacquiao for criticizing Duterte. He adds it is possible that the boxing champ turned senator may face sanctions. But for Senator Coco Pimentel, who is the party's executive vice chairman, the Cusi faction has no right to impose sanctions over supposed criticisms, noting that the party recognizes free speech. Why is it a big deal? Because they need this issue within the party kasi meron silang gustong gawin sa partido na hindi ayaw pa rin. Ay, problema kasi ayaw pagsabihin, sabihin na lang, mag-usap na lang kami para matapos ito magkaibigan pa kami. However, Matibag argues it is up to the general membership to decide on the matter and that he believes there is enough basis to penalize Pacquiao. Ewan ko po kay Senator uh, Coco kung paano niya nasabing imposible yun. Kasi common sense lang po yan. Kasi lahat naman ng bagay posible. Eh. Depende na lang kung paano gagawin. Uh, where I'm coming from as a lawyer, that can be interpreted as disloyalty to your party. Meanwhile, Pimentel warns that the party may cease to exist if the other group will support an outsider candidate. He also questioned the legitimacy of some members of the Kusi faction to which Matibag denies. Wala nung masabi kaya desperado, puro technicalities ang ibinugutas at tinahanap ngayon. Nakakalungkot po. Meanwhile, Pimentel also confirmed that he has received text messages asking to drop his support to Pacquiao. Hindi ko masabing Secretary Cusi and his camp yun. No? Pero may, may, mga, may mga text tayo na tatanggap na gano'n na which I immediately dismiss. Wala naman, na, wala naman akong personal interest dito. The group of Pacquiao is set to hold a separate National Assembly in September when Pacquiao returns from his boxing match in Las Vegas, USA. President Duterte's PDP Laban Party is still looking for a standard bearer in the upcoming 2022 presidential election. Several members of the National Party have their eyes on Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte. But the question is, will Mayor Sara be willing to run under PDP? Nel Marie Bohok filed this report. Eastern Samar Governor Ben Evardone, the provincial chairman of the Partido Democratico Pilipino, Lakas ng Bayan, believes that majority of his party mates will support President Rodrigo Duterte's endorsement for the next top leader of the country, even if it's his daughter, Davao City Mayor Sara Duterte Carpio. Posible yan. Pag sinabi ng Pangulo, ang kandidato ko ay si Mayor Sara, ay hmm. makaramihan sa mga party mates palagay ko, susunod sa Pangulo eh. Evartone said the PDP Laban is open to adopt the Davao City Mayor as their standard bearer in the 2022 polls. Um, pwede pagsabi na i-adopt namin si Mayor Sara as the uh -huh. uh, candidate namin. The, na ayaw man niya o hindi. Ayaw man niya o hindi o. Oh. But based on this statement from the two factions of the PDP Laban, searching an outsider presidential candidate is not a priority for now. Hindi po outsider. Ang mga hindi makaintay, so candidate kagad. It will take a long process para pag-isip. Why are we automatically ignoring a party mate who might be interested to run for president? Hindi ko maintindihan, masyadong dismissive. Masyadong... Masyado nilang minaliit. Uh, oh, we have a party mate na gusto nang tumakbo. Hindi, tingin kami sa labas. O oh, di, pag-usapan namin, why? According to Anthony Del Rosario, Secretary General of the Hugpong ng Pagbabago, if Mayor Sara will finally decide to run as president, she will not join other national parties but will run as an independent candidate. You're all aware, aware of course, that the Hugpong ng Pagbabago is a regional party. And if Mayor Sara decides to run for uh, president in 2022, she cannot use HNT dahil po regional party po. No? So ang mangyayari po niyan, eh, pag tatuloy po siya tumakbo bilang presidente, uh, she will be running as an in independent po. Del Rosario said the recent presidential survey will boost Mayor Sara's decision in the elections. It's definitely a boost no, for any candidate including Mayor Sara. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, she will still make a decision based on 
other factors, not only not only the surgery, but there are other factors that come into play when you're when you're uh, thinking of running for president. Meanwhile, Evardone divulged that President Duterte has already his initial list of senatoriables. He said it is a combination of his cabinet members and some re-electionists. Naglilista na siya eh, ng mm. kanyang senatorial candidates. Mm. Uh, may mga combination ito, o ba yun sa pagkabanggit niya sa akin, combination mm. ito ng cabinet members, Uh, Alam si Senator Mark, uh, Secretary Mark Villar, mm. uh, Art Tugade, mm. si Harry Roque, Secretary mm. Panelo, mm. si Secretary Bebot Betio, mm. uh, uh, si Secretary uh, Carlo Nogarles, mm-hmm. uh, tapos sa uh, sila si uh, Rebilliami, mm. si Capitulfo, okay. uh, Sila Loren, sila marami pa yung mga mga teleksyonist, sila Subiri. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. In other news, overweight policemen may now apply for a promotion following a new order from the PNP chief. Lea Ilagan reports why. Philippine National Police Chief, Police General Guillermo Eliazar has approved the suspension of the Body Mass Index or BMI requirement for promotion of police officers. General Eliasar said they took into consideration to balance the workload of their personnel special this time of pandemic. However, the BMI requirement will be implemented again when the situation goes back to normal. Directorate for Personnel and Records Management Director, Police Major General Rolando Hinana submitted a memorandum to the Office of the Chief PNP seeking to suspend the BMI as requirement for police promotion. Clamor ng maraming uh, personnel na kung pwedeng i-suspend muna at pag-aralan ng mabuti. Siyempre, we, we acknowledge yung purpose kung bakit kailangan magkaroon ng BMI. But we are not in a ideal situation right now, may pandemic. Hinanay said police activities like sports and exercises were suspended since the pandemic. Because of the pandemic, hindi makapag-exercise yung mga tao masyado. The DPRM director added that policemen cannot choose their diet during the pandemic as it will affect their immune system. Kung magda-diet, baka may risk pag inamahan ka ng, ano, ng virus na nagka-diet ka, eh nasa mahina ka na ano. BMI indicates the body fatness which may soon lead to health problems. It depends on the person's height. For most adults, the ideal BMI ranges from 18.5 to 24.9. A range of 25 to 29.9 is considered overweight, while those with 30 and above are considered obese. Leia Ilagan, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Malacanang wants to verify first the reports on Chinese vessels allegedly dumping human waste in the disputed waters around the Spratly Islands. However, presidential spokesperson Harry Roque insisted that if the result of the probe is true, the Duterte administration stands firm that the Philippines is not a dump site or a toilet. Meanwhile, regarding the recent statement of China describing the arbitral award to the Philippines as a piece of paper, Malacanang said it is not surprising, but President Duterte has already mentioned before the United Nations General Assembly that the ruling is part of the international law and no one can diminish it. And for the news abroad. After months of decreasing COVID cases in the U.S., the nation is starting to have a surge in infections as the more contagious Delta variant dominates. Mavian Dog will give us the details live. Yes, Mav? Kaz, the United States is currently facing a rise in the COVID-19 infections as new cases double in the past three weeks due to the spread of the deadlier Delta variant, with cases climbing from 11,300 on June 23 to over 23,600 on Monday. 
According to Dr. Bill Powderly, co-director of the Infectious Disease Division at Washington University School of Medicine, the spike in the number of COVID cases was expected due to the 4th of July gatherings. Parts of the U.S. are also struggling to vaccinate its population, which contributed to the widespread of the infections. In several places, health authorities and officials are begging people to get the shots and to refrain from participating in any large indoor gatherings. However, Governor Kay Ivey of Alabama has pushed back the idea of imposing restrictions and preventive measures due to availability of vaccines. According to Dr. James Lawler, director of the Global Center for Health Security in Omaha, imposing these health measures are essential to prevent further incline of cases due to the Delta variant, as observed from other parts of the world. Kath? Yes, Maeve, how about the status of the current vaccine rollout in the U.S.? Kath, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, around 55.6% of American population have received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine, while 48.1% are fully immunized. Based on data, the five states with the steepest surge in new cases had low vaccination rates. Additionally, despite the latest spike of, spike of infection, the daily deaths recorded are under 260 compared to over 4,000 a few months back which shows how effective the vaccine can prevent serious sickness and death. Back to you, Kat. Thank you, Maven Dog reporting live from Queensland, Australia. The Cuban government shuts down public internet access, limiting their usage of social media platforms. However, the U.S. disagrees with this decision. Marvi Delfin tells us the details live. Marvi? Kath, U.S. officials call out Cuba to lift restrictions on internet use enforced to the public. Since the beginning of the prohibition, over 100 people have been apprehended, and among them, independent journalists and activists who opposed the decision of the Communist Party, protesting against the economic and health crisis where the country continues to manage the pandemic. NetBlocks, a group that observes web interferences, recorded major social media platforms being shut down in the country. Ned Price, the spokesperson for the U.S. State Department, urged Cuba to respect the importance of the people's voice, whether it be online or offline. Here is what Ned Price disclosed. We call on Cuba's leaders to demonstrate restraint, uh, to urge respect for the voice of the people by opening all means of communication, uh, both online uh, and offline, uh, shutting down uh, technology, shutting down uh, information pathways, uh, that does nothing to address the legitimate uh, needs and aspirations uh, of uh, the Cuban people. Last year in September, the Biden administration claimed they would attempt to reverse the unsuccessful Trump policies which harmed Cuban families. However, the review is still currently underway. The Cuban government in over five years has not displayed any intentions of lifting political and economic suppression among the public, making it difficult for the Biden administration to link with the government. Though the Biden administration have offered humanitarian assistance to the Cuban citizens, here is what Jen Psaki of the White House has to say. There are exemptions that we can send medical supplies, we can send humanitarian supplies. That's something we've been doing for some time from the U.S. government. Kath? Marvi, what was the purpose of the Cuban government in closing the internet access to the public? Kath, internet blockages imposed by the Cuban government is a form of silencing the public or a response to the public's actions. In this case, the social media blockages was a response to the protest against the Communist Party, where activists demanded an end to the communist regime across the country. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Marvi Dolphin, reporting live from Perth, Australia. South Korea's capital Seoul implements a one-of-a-kind health protocols in gyms not to play upbeat music. Merjo Maleriado tells us why, live. Go ahead, Merjo. Yes, good evening, Kat. Gangnam Style Out, BTS Dynamite In.
The phrase circulated in South Korea as the health ministry bans music with more than 120 beats per minute or BPM in group activities such as aerobics. Size Gangnam, Gangnam Style has 132 BPM, while Dynamite has 114 BPM. In a radio interview on Monday, San Yong Rei, Health Ministry spokesperson, said that when you run faster, you spit out more respiratory droplets. So that's why you are trying to restrict heavy cardio exercises. Aside from slowing down the music, Treadmills in gyms can only reach a maximum speed of 6 km per hour, and use of gym showers are also not allowed under the new restrictions in the capital. Health officials said the measures was intended to prevent people breathing too fast or splashing sweat on others, and to avoid having to close businesses, as has happened during the previous waves of infection. Also in gyms, it is too difficult to properly wear masks or social distance while exercising, especially during group classes, therefore making it more likely for people to become close contact. The rule has been mocked as nonsense by some netizens. Gym goers and owners see the rules as unrealistic, as most people these days use their own earphones and wearable devices, and no one would check the playlist on each individual, and no one checks the BPM of a song before running in the gym. The country added a fresh high case of 1,615 on Wednesday, rising the total case load to 171,911, according to the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, or KDCA, where 80% of the cases came from Seoul. South Korea currently has 30.6% of its 15.6% million population to have received their first COVID-19 vaccine shot, having slow increase since end June. Kat? Thank you, Merido Maleriado, for that live report from Taiwan. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Kat Dumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. The local government of San Juan City started its construction of a 23-story high-rise in city public housing in city public housing project that will benefit more than 500 residents in the city aside from san juan the construction of a fourth disciplina village in valenzuela city sets in as a relocation for its less privileged citizens having no decent housing marvin Callas has this story San Juan City launched its groundbreaking ceremony to start the construction of its 23-story high-rise in-city public housing project. Through the said project, less privileged citizens, including informal settlers of San Juan City, will be able to acquire affordable housing. The housing project can accommodate more than 540 families. It has a land total of 2,624 square meters and each residential unit has a space of 28 square meters. The housing also comes with a complete package including water and electricity. Madalas po pag may nirenovate galing San Juan, ang uh, napapagdalan po sa kanila ay sa Bulacan o sa Rizal, malayo sa kanilang orihinal na tahanan, malayo sa trabaho, malayo, malayo sa pamilya, malayo sa paaralan ng kanilang mga anak. So, talaga na didisrupt po ang buhay ng mga San Juanenyo kapag sila ay nirenovate sa malalayong lugar. Mayor Francis Zamora clarified that the housing project is not free because a monthly payment is required for residents wanting to avail such, adding that the said is not considered as a rent but as an advance payment because tenants own the property after its 30 years installment. Yung magiging fee natin will be based on NHA standards. No? Kaya nga ho tayo nakipag-partner uh, sa NHA sapagkat sila naman po talaga ang uh, merong tamang panuntunan with regard to uh, the amounts. But one thing is for sure, ito po ay hindi lumalabas na rental expense. Sapagkat kada buwan na ikaw ay magbabayad, may tuturing yang hulog sa bayad. Some residents regarded the housing project as a big help, especially for long-term tenants. Kasi kaysa nangungupaan ka dito, tatling libo, di ba? E di doon mo na ibigay sa ano, sa pabahay, mapapa sa akin pa yan after a years. 50 years na kami rito na nangungupahan. Malaking tulong to para sa mga taga San Juan. Lalo-lalo na kasi ngayon sa hirap ng buhay ngayon. At least magiging ano yun, di ba? Rentoon yun, di ba? Malaking tulong talaga to para sa amin na nangungupahan. 
The project construction is estimated to cost 1.3 billion pesos. The initial 500 million is funded by the National Housing Authority or NHA. San Juan City and the NHA targets to finish the construction of the housing project within three years. Aside from San Juan, Valenzuela City also started constructing its fourth Disciplina village at Barangay Arcong Bato. It is a three-story rental housing project intended to accommodate 720 families. Valenzuela LGU intended the housing project as a relocation site for its residents living beside the rivers under the transmission lines of the National Grid Corporation and residents whom have lost their houses due to disasters. Marvin Callas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Few volcanic tremors were recorded at the Taal Volcano in the past 24 hours. However, the alert level 3 in the volcano stays. Asher Kadapan Jr. is on the line to give us more details live. Asher, go ahead. Diego, although some monitored parameters are declining, some data are still high to downgrade the alert level of the Taal Volcano. This as volcanic earthquakes and tremors in the volcano were lowered from over 150 per day in the last couple of days to just six tremors in the last 24 hours. But the Taal Volcano Observatory explains that the sulfur dioxide gas emissions pose a threat of a possible big eruption. Plumes extending to up to 1,500 meters high can still be observed from its main crater. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology says it is due to the upwelling of volcanic gas. Hanggang last week naman may mga explosions pa tayong na na monitor na nakikita. So, depende pa po kasi yung gas kahit bumaba po siya nung 4,184, medyo mataas pa rin po siya. Once the monitored parameters are lowered to the safest number and be sustained, Tao Volcano Observatory resident volcanologist Paolo Nariniva says the alert level may also be lowered upon the agency's assessment. Uh, kung masustain po yung decline ng monitored parameters gaya ng sa seismicity or earthquakes, yung sa gases, pwede pong i-consider yun. Pero dadaan pa rin po yun ang assessment kung pwede na nga pong ipaba. With this, Taal Volcano remains in alert level 3. Residents in the Taal Volcano Island and the five barangays in the municipality of Aconcilio and Laurel within the 7-kilometer range of danger zone are still advised to evacuate the areas. Activities in Taal Lake are also suspended beyond the window hours for fish pen operators. Feedbox says they will inform the public accordingly once there are changes in the parameters of volcanic activities. Diego? Thank you, uh, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live. The Department of Labor and Employment, or DOLA, lifted today the suspension of deployment of Filipino workers to Israel. DOLA issued a memorandum stating that Filipino workers can be deployed to Israel effective immediately after an almost two-month ban. DOLA Secretary Silvestre Bello III said the decision was based on the recommendation of the Department of Foreign Affairs due to the low-level incidents between the Israel Defense Force and Palestinian militant groups. This was after Israel and Hamas agreed to a ceasefire in May. On May 20, 2021, Dole suspended the deployment of Filipino workers due to the tension between the Israel Defense Force and Palestine. Australian scientists have innovated the holy grail procedure of blood sugar testing, making it the A-class experience for diabetic patients. Early Briones reports why. Paul Dostor, a professor of physics at the University of Newcastle in Australia and his team, have developed a non-invasive strip that helps measure glucose levels via saliva. The new technology works by implanting an enzyme which will detect sugar levels in blood into a transistor and communicate the presence of glucose. Once collected, the test can be printed as the electronic materials use inks, making it affordable for many. It is claimed that this will open a new pain-free method as diabetic patients often undergo constant pricking of their fingers multiple times a day with a lancet and placing a drop of blood on a testing strip. 
Duster claims that the new discovered technology could be utilized in other health issues such as allergens, hormones, cancer testing, and even COVID-19. Newcastle and Harvard universities are currently undergoing tests utilizing the same technology for COVID-19. Duster professes that it can radically alter our perceptions of medical devices, and in particular sensors as they can be printed at a remarkably low cost. Early Briones, UN TV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And before we close, we will leave you with the final word, giving glory to God from the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, verse 3. It says, Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. And those are the reasons behind the news July 14, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. <laughs>